Hey everyone, it's Rachel. As promised, here is the first video from my mini painting live stream on Twitch. In this vid, I'll be painting the Wastelander figure from the Fallout board game, and going over some basic tips and tricks I've been able to bring into my mini painting from my experience with traditional oil and acrylic artwork. Just a reminder, if you want to come catch the painting live streams, follow us on Twitch at 2 Bats Gaming, and you'll be notified when we're live. Hey everybody, it's Rachel from 2 Bats. Thank you so much for showing up tonight. Um, I'm really excited. This is the first one and hopefully I do okay. Um, so I've been really waiting for to do the Fallout minis. I couldn't help myself. They needed to be painted so badly. But I wanted to save them for something special, so I think this is it. I figure this time I'm just going to do one mini start to finish and Maybe later we'll do some like badge painting or something like that. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. All right. Um, so I went ahead and primed her already just because drying time and needed to do it outside because I did the spray. I went with the Krylon because it's specifically for plastics. Um, it's pretty cheap at Walmart or what or Home Depot, whatever you want. And I did white. Uh, a lot of people have been saying the gray or the black. I think the black's a little dark and obscures the details, makes it harder to see to paint them. The gray is okay, but I like the way the color shows up on the white better. And I don't find it a huge problem to get the dark darks or get in the little crevices. It can be a problem. It's just a personal preference. So let's start with the smaller details. I'm going to go ahead and get her face in and started. Let's see. We're going to go We're going to go light flesh. I have finally broken down and accepted that Vallejo is the best. It is the funkity funk. And I tried going the craft paint. If any of you have watched the many paintings on the YouTube channel, uh I tried and I have to admit they are just inferior in Pretty much every way. They are inconsistent in quality. They are inconsistent in texture. Just, it's just the way Vallejos are so much better and cover better. They have better pigmentation. And I've broken down and I won't use anything else. I did recently get the model color sets, which I'm very happy about. And when I do the other Fallout ones that have a little more metal and things like that going on, like the, um, the ghoul, I'm going to do some cool rusty stuff. I haven't gotten to use it too much since I got it yet. And go real light. And if you get too much pooling, you can just dry your brush off and and put a little more and it'll just soak up the extra water and paint. I know it looks like nothing now, but we're going to build it up and it will look awesome. Might end up putting a little darker flesh on her. We'll see how that goes. You know what? Let's try the darker flesh. Like I said, I just got a new set of these, so I haven't gotten to use all of them. That is better color, but coverage, but out of the bottle, it does look a little orange to me, personally. And that's kind of the thing. If, if you ever put a color on and don't like how it looks so much, while it's still a little wet, you can go back in with just water and get some of it off. So I'd rather her be a little pinker. Let's see, we've got just a little rosier. I think it looks a little more natural if that's the skin tone you're going for. Maybe we'll go a little thinner too. It's always wise when you're working with acrylics or anything water-based. If you get 
if there's a bunch of water on the brush itself on like the metal part make sure you get it off because it can run down into the brush and cause the paint to pool in inconvenient ways yeah that's looking a little better he's still light I have to admit I'm still kind of new to this too I've done lots of other kind of painting but the minis are kind of a their own special beast. The approach is is so careful and delicate and you have to take it pretty slow to build it up right so it doesn't get goopy and gross. There you go. She has a bit of skin now. Let's see. All right, because I'm terrible and impatient, I want to do part of the skirt. And I'm going to go with bloody red. I have noticed the game color version of the Vallejos is definitely thicker. So straight out of the bottle is probably too thick and you want to thin it down some. And definitely add water slowly to it. It's a lot easier to add more water than it is to add more paint without being wasteful. Because I know I tried to do I tried to do everything on the super cheap and just get the 50 cents bottles and stuff like that. But like I said, I am a convert and the Vallejo really are great. They're not terribly expensive. And they do last if you're careful with how you squirt them out. So I think it's pretty fair. And I did get done putting this color in. It's going to look awfully clean. Especially for a wastelander. So we'll, we'll dirty it up some. Another good thing to think about while you're painting is, you know, while it, it's still tiny little areas and the whole point of thinning the paint so much and doing it in layers is to keep the brush strokes out of it because even with a tiny brush and the brush strokes on such a small object are going to be an issue but while you're painting it think about which direction something is moving in so like the skirt is is hanging down so if you do your brush strokes in that direction it's going to look more naturalistic than if I go like that. See, that looks awkward. And it is going to get covered up eventually. But there are, it makes a tiny little texture. And it, it will matter and it will make it look strange. And fabrics are really fun when you do them right. And they look really, really good. Also, I have to admit, this is the first time I've gotten the sticky tack and attached it to something, which is terrible to say because I know everyone tells you to do it, but it is actually good advice. It makes it so much better. And then you won't put your hands in the paint, which I will inevitably do, but keeping it to a minimum is better. And I think that little under part where the skirt is torn, I might just do another color. Give it a little more interest. Another good rule in art is threes. Good composition tends to come in threes and the way that you split up whatever canvas you're working on. What and you want to be directing the eye around you're tr you're trying to direct the eye to where you want it to go. And you can use different different ways of doing that. You can you do it with shading and highlights, because obviously you're going to s the brighter parts are going to be more noticeable. So you can use that for lighting, like the way the object or is standing, the light source is going to come down on it from certain angles depending on what it is. I think everyone kind of gets that that concept but you can also use color in separate areas to do the same thing 
So if you want to use the little details to kind of pull the color through, because it'll direct people unknowingly. And it gives it some more visual interest. So if you just have a single color plop down, eh, you know, it's even with shading, it helps, but it's it's still not as interesting unless you have more going on. So did the little bill of her hat and whatever little bandana, scarf, leather thing. I don't know. I do not know what is on her boot, but it is now red. With the mini, since they're so small, it's good to kind of do different areas that aren't touching so the paint doesn't bleed unintentionally. If you want it to, that's cool, but if you don't, that presents a problem. Let's go ahead and get the base of the gun down. Obviously, it is going to end up being gunmetal, but since I primed it in white, I am going to put a light black on there so, it, so the silver looks better when I put it on. Well, I'll say those two. Most of the minis I have painted for the Two Bats YouTube have been the Arena of the Planeswalkers. And while they have been, they've been fun and they've been good, but these are better quality already. Like, this is much better. The detail's better. They don't, it doesn't feel as flimsy. All right, since I've got the black out, I'm going to go ahead and do her boots. Let's see, I've got a leather brown somewhere. There it is. The leather brown in the game color series just seems like really yellowy to me. So I like mixing it with a little bit of black, which actually brings me to a good point. So the, especially with Citadel, they like, having specific colors for specific things, which I totally get, and, you know, all more power to you, I guess. But I, I feel like that's a really expensive way to do things. And if you're going for something very specific and it's, you know, canon and all that, then fair enough. But there's so many... With the... There's so many things like the board game minis or... Or even if you just don't like being forced into that. Um, to do something a little different, I think, is nice. You know, I personally don't like mine looking like everybody else's, even if it is canon. So, I tend to like mixing my own colors more than I like buying them. Besides, that gets expensive quick. I mean, there's just, there's hundreds of colors to buy. And most of them, you could make really easy. It is unnecessary. So, a little, a little bit of color theory. So, when you've got the leather brown, I'm sorry, this is a little, a little messy at the moment, but here's a clean spot. So, it's a little yellowy, right? Well, if you mix yellow and black, you get more of a greenish color. It's a disgusting green. and But sometimes that is exactly what you need. It is wonderful for ghouls. So you can do it with the brighter yellows. Zinc yellows are a good disgusting color. Um, mixed with black is wonderful. Because I want her to look like all of her stuff is dirty and old and like she's been wandering around the wasteland. You know, I definitely don't want brand new clean leather. That wouldn't be appropriate. Mm, I'm thinking her gloves should be leather too. I do really like this wet palette. You know, I'm so used to working in oils that take forever to dry, so if it takes if I have to stop mid thing 
and come back the next day, it's still it's still wet and it's fine, which is frustrating in some regards and great in others. The acrylics dry so fast. At least to to me, it just seems so crazy. But the wet palette helps significantly and being able to close it, they will stay wet for a while. All right, see, I just did the glove over that little piece of shirt and I have a feeling in a minute I'm gonna regret that when I try and go back in. So with the minis, I'm still kind of learning the proper order of things, the best way to go about it. Um, I have fully admitted I'm still relatively new to this, so you guys get to kind of learn along with me. I'm willing to make all of the mistakes. Like I got some really cheap, horrible um, spray paint to prime, to prime them like the first time with the AOTP ones. Dear God, it was terrible. Like it, it just sputtered out onto everything and made that weird speckly texture. That was a bad idea. All right, what do you guys think her shirt color should be? Yeah, let's do a blue, maybe like a denim -y. Now, obviously, that's too blue. And we can't, there's a couple of approaches. You can go the route of doing a brighter blue, a more vibrant, and then going over it with different color washes and building it up. Or you can mix a closer base color and then alter it from there. It will involve less altering that way. So I'm going to add a little bit of black. And then I'm actually going to take a little bit of the leather brown and mix it in. Since they're opposite colors, it's going to tone it down. It, it, it makes it a little more brown. So it's not just darker or lighter, it's a different tone of the color. And I find that a little more pleasing. See, that's not quite so bright. I know right now the gun and her little hood are blending together quite a bit, but when we put the silver on the black for the gun, that will go away. Okay, right, let's kind of want to go ahead and do the butt of the gun. So I'm going to use the mahogany brown. Now the thing I'm, I'm kind of noticing is with the leather I did a little earlier, the glove and her belt are kind of running together. And I'm not liking that so much. So I think, and it's getting a little matchy matchy for a wasteland look. I feel like you just kind of find whatever. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the mahogany brown and mix it in with the black. Let's see, I just saw a question. Are you gonna dry brush before or after? Uh, I think I'm going to dry brush before, and that way if it'll tint whatever light color I do, and if I want to go back over it and bring out more of the lightness, it's super easy. I do tend to go back and forth on those. So I mix the mahogany with some black and it's going to go over this so it won't be a perfect match to the butt of the gun but it will give a little more variation. Yeah, see that looks a little better. And then we do the highlights and the shadows, it'll sharpen it up even more. 
All right, I'm going to switch brushes because I'm having trouble getting in there. So this one's a liner. The one I, the brush I was using is a four aught round, which I could have technically used a bigger brush on the other, on the skirt and stuff like that, but you know, it doesn't really matter that much. Not in this case, there's no huge areas to worry about. The liners are great for getting in the tiny spots. You just have to use a real light touch with them. I got a little bit of other color on her arm, so I'm just gonna go back over that. I'm gonna blend it back out. And since I've got the flesh tone on here already, just do another pass on all of her skin. I do kind of like the idea of having separate color on the underside of the skirt. What about a yellow? Hate it and go over it again. Use the sun yellow, but I want to add a little bit of white to it. Yeah, that gives it a little bit. A little bit of pop, a little bit of interest. Actually, I'm going to switch back to the round. The round's a little shorter and easier to control on larger areas than the liner. The liner's really just good for those teeny tiny areas and making lines. And so like I said, you're like kind of distributing the colors to lead you around the figure. So I'm gonna give her some little yellow buttons. And, and certainly don't forget about the back. I don't wanna do the yellow on that. So I think I'm gonna just give her a little detail line up here. I still got the red. I'm going to go over it a little bit. It's looking a little splotchy. I don't mind a little bit because a little variation in color is kind of nice with her. And I said I was going to make it a little more of a plaid. So I'm going to get the dark green. I want to go ahead and put the detail on the skirt because once I start doing the washes and try and build it up and make it look more more like fabric, more like it's flowing, I want the pattern to have that same effect. And this would be the time for the liner. Switch brushes real quick. So I'm kind of trying to follow the folds of the skirt. It's not going to be completely perfect because the skirt's not. But that's what I want in this one. If you feel like getting fancy and doing fabric folds, like this and apparently just like doing things that are a pain in the ass um you know they are gonna ebb and flow they're gonna disappear in strange places and that's all okay because fabric doesn't usually sit perfectly still or perfectly flat and you won't see everything from every angle the vertical lines 
I don't want all the vertical to fall just on in the dips of the folds. I'm going to try and specifically make that not happen. There's more green than I wanted. Never forget the weave fabric folds is definitely uneven. So, like, down where it starts getting into more of, let's see, let me hold this at a, uh, I'm so bad at this. This is why I can't play flight simulators. I cannot do, I can't do that kind of view. I don't know why I think I'm broken. I promise I will never try and be a pilot. Um, but see how where the folds get closer together, the vertical lines are going to get closer together too. Alright, that's starting to look pretty cool. I'm liking it. I'm, I'm still liking the idea of a color un underneath the little reveal right there, but now that's turned into looking more like her skin. So let's introduce another green, but I'm gonna use the same dark green that I used to do the lines in her skirt, but I'm gonna add a little bit of the yellow. So it'll be different, a little bit different, but enough the same that'll keep the continuity. All right, so there's where we're at so far. I'm going to give it a little bit of time to dry. Just make sure all the crevices get get in there. And then I'm going to come back and do some washes. So we got, I think everything's dry, at least enough. I'm going to kind of go back and forth on the washing and dry brushing. Because, and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and do the blue on the shirt. So the thing about the way that color works to the eye and to the mind is cooler colors recede and warmer colors pop forward. So the blue wash on the blue shirt is obvious choice, but it is also going to help. It'll make the, uh, the folds in the shirt recede a little more and give it a little more depth. So, you know, just a little bit. Let's see. And okay, thank you all so much for bearing with me again because it's really hard to paint and think and talk and make sure that you guys can see everything properly. And I'm sure I'm gonna get better at this. So thank you, thank you all for my, for the leeway on the first time. I'm gonna try and be selective about where the wash is going. Cause I could do the whole thing but then you, if it's too dark, you have to go back in and work it even more than if you are selective about where you put it. So I'm going to make it, I'm definitely going to make it darker under where her arm is because it'll be casting it because it casts a shadow under there. And then a little darker under the folds and up under her boobs. Yeah. See, that's already making a huge difference. So I do have the Citadel washes because they're the first ones we got. And I haven't used them all up except for the Nin Oil. And I replaced that with Vallejo. Yeah, shout out to our friend Josh who got me started on the Vallejo because he was right. He was definitely right. Definitely want to get the small of her back because she, since the way she's standing, it casts a decent shadow. Can't forget the ruffle. All right, so I think the shirt's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do the skirt next. I don't want to go too dirty on the skirt, but I don't want it to look too clean either. Let me go ahead and get a little bit of the crimson.
And let's go sepia. Yeah, no, that might not be red enough. You can always make stuff around on your palette until you're happy. Sometimes you don't know exactly which way you want to go with it. Might add a little bit of the blue. Give it a little bit of a little more purpley. You can always try and find a a little more hidden spot to try it on if you're not sure that that's the color you want to use. But I think that might look pretty good. Not hard to tell on camera. I kind of like doing the kind of like doing the washes or the glazes to pull out the shadows and then do the highlights and then go back over the highlights if I think they're too bright and give them a little more color or a little more tint. I'm going to do this kind of purpley in all of the little crevices of the skirt. And then I'm probably, because it's covering more, more than just the deepest, darkest spots, probably going to go back in with some of the black just to get it a little bit darker. All right, so that's starting to get a little better. Starting to look a little more naturalistic. I'm gonna get a little bit of the black. And if you've got a color going that you like and then you want to mess with it, do it in a separate area. Go ahead and get, you know, whatever you wanna add to it. Clean your brush off, and then add a little bit of that color black back into the black. I can talk, I swear. And I'm not going to put the black in every one of these folds, just the deep ones. Because I want to, I want to maintain that that feeling of movement. And some places are going to be darker than others. And with the fabric, it's kind of nice because you can. Get a decent amount on your brush, not a ton, but put it up in that top bit and then just draw it down. And like, I think that's a little too much, so I'm gonna pull some of it back out. Let's see. Get a little bit of the nightshade. Ooh, and actually, I'm gonna go back in and pick out the darkest bits with it with the black. And definitely, definitely, definitely build up slowly. It's a lot easier to add than it is to remove. Well, I'm trying to just not go over any one spot too much. Let it dry a little bit before the next. I'm gonna go ahead and do the earth shade over the leather. Pull out some of those details. So I'm taking the black and just sort of picking out some some little spots I didn't think were quite dark enough. It will help when I do the dry brushing next. But since I've already got it on my brush, I'm going to go ahead and do some of it. All right, tell you what, now, now that I've thought about it, let's go ahead and do the silver. Right, I'm going to do gunmetal and then I'm going to do highlights in the brighter silver. I didn't go crazy on the black earlier, but I think it'll give it enough contrast.
Ooh, and while I've still got a little bit of this reddish wash, water it down just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and do her cheeks. Give her arms a little bit of shadow too. And I think the gunmetal should be dry enough that I can do some of the black on the gun. I know it seems like it I, it may seem silly to do do a base coat of black and then go over it in the gunmetal and then do black again. But paint is very rarely completely opaque anyway. So you're going to have a little bit of that color showing through and it's not going to be in every place you want it. So going back over it helps a lot. And you'll get more variation and it'll make it more interesting. Like, I think I'm actually going to tint her hood a little bit. Maybe, maybe with the green. Bring that color back up from her skirt some more. It doesn't need to be a lot. Just something a little more than just a black. Yeah. The reds and greens are tricky. They're really good as, as opposite colors. They bring each other out well, but you gotta be careful with them, otherwise you get real Christmassy. So you wanna bear in mind, like with color, there's kinda, you wanna think about, there's tints, tones, and shades. So tint is a color mixed with white. A tone is a color mixed with gray, and a shade is a color mixed with black. And each of those will will play a little bit differently. You'll get a different feeling of color, a different intensity. And having varying intensities helps with how dramatic it can look. You can get a much better depth with using those different kinds. So if you used all tints, it's going to look real light and flat or all of either, or well, either, all of any kind of it is going to look a lot more flat than varying those ideas. And it's the kind of thing, just play around with it and find out what you like and, and see how it feels to you. Get a little more black into the belt there. Around her arms, so it looks like her arm... So I'm trying to get it to where she, it looks like her arm's actually going into the glove instead of fused with it. Yeah, come back. And get a little more blue to mix in with the black. I would normally use like a Payne's Gray for doing shadows in any other kind of painting I do. So I'm trying to kind of create that color since I don't really have it. I assume I could buy it, but eh, I don't know. Because a lot of times the black, straight up black is just too harsh. Especially on skin. And the softer colors, like, you're not going to ever have a directly black shadow. It's going to, the way that the light reflects and then cast the shadow, you're going to get a little bit of the color that's underneath it or next to it. Using, using the blues and the purplies in with the black helps a lot. It softens it, it deepens it, it's, it's a good idea all around. And I'm going to be dry brushing this soon. Because after the dry brushing, you can always go back in and pull out any darks that you, you covered a little too much or whatever that you're not happy with. And 
And also, the dry brushing is nice because once once you do it, once you pull out all the highlights, it, it gives it a little bit more body. And then doing a shadow over top of that as if it were cast on top of the 3D object. Well, it is a 3D object, but a more 3D object helps. Let's see. I don't want... Oh, I don't want the dead white. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do the skirt first. I don't want to do straight up white on everything. And so for the dry brushing, I'm not going to use one of these pointy brushes. I'm going to use something a little blunter. And flatter because you're going to want to kind of go on top of it. So get some on there, get most as much of the water out as you can, and then come over it. I think I will add a smidge of white to it though because that's still blending in too much. All right, make it not too pink though, that's the danger. All right, so here's the thing I just learned. So I hadn't really gotten to use the model color. The model colors are a lot thinner, and I like the little bit thicker paints for the dry brushing because the, the ones that are already way thinned down, it, you can't work as much of the water out of it to get a dry brush. Actually, the wet palette is not working in my favor in this case. Let's use a paper towel. Yeah, no. Well, orange here is helping with the red because the orange is going to pop out more than red does. And it's actually having quite. I'm liking the effect it has on the skin tone. Kind of pulls down that yellowy. But I'm gonna do another wash over the skirt because I like the way that it's pulling out the highlights and making it look a little more 3D, but it's also making it look sharp. And I'm all down for some pleats, but but Jesus Christ, you don't want to have to like cut yourself on them. I'm actually going to leave the little bit, the warmer color I've been using on there, even on the blues. Because it's not terribly noticeable, but it does help everything pop forward. And it helps keep the continuity. I'm also liking how this makes everything look a little more worn. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do another wash over this, but that is okay. I can also try and work a little more of it down in the crevices. That'll help soften it a little bit, not make it a little less sharp. All right. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to do a quick pass on the gun with the brighter silver. And then just do a quick wash over the parts that I want to deepen back down. I'm going to go back to the round. A little bit of the blue black. I love how her shirt is on the back. I think that popped out well.
and do an all over wash with the, uh, what am I using here? Franklin Flesh Shade. Get it back to a little more red. Although I have lost a little bit of the plaid, but I like the hint of it left over. Like I'm not offended by what disappeared. Get back a little bit of the black. I don't want to look sun bleached and worn, but I don't want to give up any of the depth or definition. I'm trying to make this wash last a little bit longer. So close to done. I want to get more out. Just nurse it along. All right. All right, guys. Let me move all of my shit out of the way. Getting some good light. Do right. you guys see anything I need to do? I, her shirt's a little shiny. So what do you think? Should we call it good? Oh, this has been a lot of fun. This was... This is great. Thank you all for coming and watching and hanging out and, and there's still four more of these to go. All right, I think I'm gonna call it a night, but I really, really do appreciate all of you tuning in. You've been wonderful. Thanks for watching. Again, if you like what you saw, please come over and join me on twitch.tv backslash 2 All right, see you soon.